So what we're going to do is, uh, like I said, if you have your Bible, uh, open that up. We're going to be in Luke chapter 24. Uh, so open that up, uh, and we're going to get to it. So this is what it says, uh, Luke chapter 24, uh, verses 1 through 9. It says, But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood there in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and then on the third day rise. And they remembered his words, and they returned from the tomb um, and told the eleven, and told this to all of the rest. Uh, For the last three weeks, we have been going through a sermon series entitled, uh, Emptied to be Filled. Uh, And we've looked at a a few topics of things in our lives that we need to be emptied of, and then things that we need to be filled with um, as a result. Uh, The first week, we looked at being emptied of fear. And then, because we are empty of the fear, to be filled uh, with, with peace, to be filled with God's peace. Uh, the next week, we looked at being emptied of the God of me, being emptied of myself, and being filled with Christ. Uh, last week, we looked at being emptied of the flesh and being emptied of our sin uh, and being filled uh, with the Spirit. Uh, this morning, uh, this series crescendos um, in, into the greatest and most important topic uh, that we could ever talk about, and that is being emptied uh, of death to be filled with life. It is our goal to be emptied of death and be filled uh, with life. You know, when we sit down and we think about all the wonderful benefits um, of Jesus going to the cross and Jesus coming out of that tomb, there there are many. You know, we have comfort and joy and security and and hope. We have all of those things. But by far the greatest benefit that we have because Jesus came out of that tomb on the third day is the fact uh, that we have life. That Jesus went to the cross and took the death that we deserve as sinners. We deserve this death, uh, but Jesus took that death for us. But see, what we need to understand is that before Jesus did that, before Jesus went to the cross, before Jesus went and battled death in the tomb and came out victorious, we ourselves were dead. We were dead in our sin. We were dead in our trespasses. We were dead in our ability to follow the law. We were dead in our ability to come to God. Because of our sin, we were separated from God, and we were dead to him. We were like the walking dead long before AMC, long before the comic books. We were dead in our sin with absolutely no hope to come back to life. Because without Jesus, there is no hope of life. Without the resurrection, there is no hope to ever come back uh, to Christ. We were dead in our sins, and there was absolutely nothing that we could do about it. Paul makes it clear in Romans 6.23, he says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages of sin is death. So for all of those who have sinned, for everyone who has ever made a mistake, uh, the wages, the punishment, uh, the, the reward for that sin is death. Plain and simple, because sin leads to death. And each and every one of us uh, that has ever existed other than Jesus has sinned. Paul makes that point very clear uh, in Romans chapter 3 where he talks that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So every one of us has sinned and in that sin we are dead. In that sin we're separated from God and we can't come near to him. But that's why Jesus came. That's why Jesus uh, was born. That's why Jesus became flesh and came down to this earth. Jesus took on the sins of all mankind throughout all of time uh, so that they could be forgiven. And he took them to the cross and he took them to the grave. We were forgiven of that sin, uh, but, but, and then we have life through that. Now see, before the resurrection, if Jesus, if the resurrection never happened, if Jesus just came down and took on the sins of mankind and went to the cross, uh, we would still be dead because he had not defeated death. You see, when he goes to the tomb and he comes out of the tomb, that's when life eternal comes back. If he would have just died and stayed died, he would have been just like every other sacrifice that would have come before him, um, you know, cleansing our sin, uh, but not giving us life and life eternal. We had no life before the resurrection. We had no life before Jesus. All we ever knew was death. The best that we could ever do, the best that we could ever do would lead to nothing but death. Because of sin and our fallen nature, we couldn't come to God. Because of our brokenness, in our rebellion, we couldn't come to God. Here's what Paul tells the church in, in, in Ephesus. This is from Ephesians 2, uh, verses 1 through 7. He says, And you were dead in your trespasses, in your sins, in which you once walked, 
following the course of the world, following the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit that is now work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, uh, were nature, by nature children of wrath, just like the rest of mankind. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love which he has loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Paul makes it very clear there. He says you were once dead in your trespasses. You were once dead in your sins. He doesn't sugarcoat it. Paul tells it just like it is. He says, you were dead in your sins. You were following the course of the world. You were acting just like the rest of mankind and doing everything against the way of God. You were following the prince of, of darkness. You were sons of disobedience. He says, there's nothing but death in, the way of, in that way of life. Now, if we stop right there, uh, there's not much hope. If we stop right there, that's a pretty doom and gloom thing. If that was all that Paul said right there was like, look, you're dead in your trespasses, you're dead in your sin, you're sons of disobedience, you're following the prince of darkness, uh, and you were dead in your sins. If he stopped right there, that wouldn't be a a good sentence. That wouldn't be a good paragraph. That would be something that would invoke fear in our lives. That would invoke hopelessness in our lives. But Paul doesn't stop there. Listen, I love superhero movies. Uh, it's like my favorite genre of movie. I don't want to watch any romantic comedies. I don't want to you know, watch you know, anything. I, you know, I love superhero movies. And my favorite part about superhero movies is there always comes a point, because let's be honest, they're all the same. Every superhero movie is the same, and I know that, and I love them because of that. Uh, because at every point during a superhero movie, uh, there is certain death and certain doom um, and certain destruction. You know, if you look at Avengers 1, uh, a great movie. Avengers 1 is an awesome movie. Uh, but there towards the end, this portal opens up and uh, from another dimension and these alien robots, I know it sounds crazy, uh, come flying into New York and they're, you know, blowing buildings up and stuff and it looks completely hopeless. There is no hope. Everybody's going to die. Death and destruction, they're going to kill the whole city and blow it all up. Uh, but then here come the Avengers. Here come the Avengers and they take on, they close the portal and, and get rid of these, you know, alien machine things and, and, and get rid of all of it together. And the superheroes come and save the day. And that's exactly what we see uh, in the gospel story. That's exactly what we see uh, in this um, chapter in Ephesians 2. That's exactly what we see, uh, what Paul is saying here. Death is guaranteed. Destruction is guaranteed. Doom is guaranteed. This is the end of the world as we know it. Uh, That's exactly what Paul is saying. Uh, Nothing but doom and gloom. It's all over. Uh, The fat lady is warming up her voice. She's about to start singing. But then the hero shows up. There's a little word in there, an important word in this passage is just three letters, uh, and it's the word but. And I know my knucklehead kids are probably laughing at that, I just said but, uh, but the word but. He says, you're dead in your sins. It's all over. Nothing but doom and gloom. You're dead in your sins. You're dead in your trespasses. There's nothing that you can do but God. But God. But God being in the rich being rich in mercy and having great love that he has for us, that even though we were dead in our sins, he sent Jesus. Even though we were dead in our sins, dead in our trespasses, certain death coming, but God loved us too much. But God loved us too much that he had to send Jesus. But God had to come and cover our sins. That's not the only place we've seen this today. Uh, We read from Romans, it says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. This is a perfect picture that Paul is painting here. He says you are dead with no chance of survival. You have made your bed, you're going to lay in it. You've turned your back on God. You've rebelled against God, and as a result, you will live in eternal death forever. But, but God... But God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die on a cross. And he sent Jesus to not only die on the cross, but to come out of that grave so that we could have life and have life eternal. That even though we were sinners, rebellious humans, God sent Jesus to save us. Jesus was born to go to that cross and to take our punishment. It's the reason Jesus was born. Jesus came to die. But he came for so much more than that. Jesus came from so much more than to just die on a cross. Jesus also came to defeat death once and for all. 
Because when sin entered the world through Adam, there was a huge problem. That sin separated us from God, and as a result, we were going to die. We could not come to him, and it's the whole reason uh, that we were created. The whole reason that God created humanity was so that he could have a relationship with them, but because of sin, uh, that was corrupted, and we couldn't come to him. We couldn't have that relationship, so God knew that he had to save us, and he did that through sending Jesus. The punishment for sin is death, and it had to be paid. The consequence for sin was death and death eternal. The punishment for sin was death, eternal separation from God. So God sends Jesus to take that death for us, to offer himself up as a sacrifice for all of us and to defeat death once and for all. Uh, in the first um, book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, it's one of the greatest chapters uh, when it comes to um, uh, talking about the resurrection. Paul goes on and he tells us all of the proof of the resurrection and all of the great things of the resurrection. He's like, look, I can tell you that Jesus rose from the dead. He's like, Jesus rose from the dead and he appeared uh, to the women. He appeared um, to the 11. He appeared to all these people. He even appeared to 500 people. And then Paul starts listening to these people. And he's like, look, you don't believe me. Go talk to them. Go talk to all of these people. The resurrection is everything. Uh, he goes on and he tells us, he says, look, if the resurrection is not true, then your faith is worthless. My preaching is worthless. The resurrection is everything. But one of the greatest benefits of the resurrection is the fact that Jesus arose over death, that he was victorious over death, that he reigned over death. And within Jesus defeating the death, uh, we have hope to defeat death as well. The greatest benefit of coming to Christ, the greatest benefit of coming to God is the possibility of life uh, after this life is over. That's why John 3.16 is, is the most famous verse in the whole Bible, and it should be. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, will not die, but will have eternal life. That's what we're looking for here. Look how Paul ends this great chapter in 1 Corinthians. Uh, this is verses 53 through 58. He says, For this perishable body, perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and mortal puts on immortality, then comes to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? For the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us glory through Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord that your labor is not vain. Paul says, where is your victory, O death? Where is your sting? He's like, because Jesus came to this earth and died on the cross and went to the grave and then came up out of the grave victorious, the death has no hold on us anymore. He says, look, the power of death was sin. Jesus came and took care of sin. Therefore, death how, has no more power over us anymore. He's like, death no longer has a hold on us because Jesus came, died that death, and then defeated that death by coming up out of the tomb. And as a result, we have the opportunity for life. This is the greatest story ever. And you see, this Easter story is not just a cool story. This isn't just a story of, of, of God you know, telling an angel to hold his grape juice while he brings someone back to life. This isn't just him showing off his power. This isn't just a superhero story where you think the main character's dead and then all of a sudden he comes back. It's not like that at all. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the creator of the universe, came down to die for humanity, uh, took that death, went to the grave, and then came out victorious over death once and for all. He died to take the punishment of death and sin and defeated that death and sin once and for all so that anyone that could place their faith in him and place their trust in him could have eternal life uh, and be with him throughout all of eternity. That's what it means to be emptied of death and filled with life. Because as we've read and looked at, we're dead in our sins. We're the walking dead. Dead in the sinful life without even knowing it. Walking straight to the tombs and eternal death. But while we were still sinners, while we were still rebellious to God, while we were still turning our back on God, God sent Jesus to take our sins, to die on a cross, and then defeat death once and for all. So we have to come to this point. You see, Jesus has done all the work. God has done all the work. But we have to come to this point where we allow him to empty us of that death, to empty us of the, the sin and the death that is within us and allow him to fill us with this life. We have to make the decision to accept the free gift of his grace. You know, we read from Romans earlier that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of, of God is his grace and that we can have eternal life. Uh, but we have to accept that grace. 
Jesus went to the cross and took the sins of all mankind throughout all time and took them to the cross, uh, and, and they're gone forever. But we have to, allow, but we have to come to him and, and, and accept that. We have to accept that forgiveness. There are no membership dues. There are no crazy rules and guidelines you have to follow. There are no steep requirements. We simply put our faith in God and trust him as our Lord and Savior and follow Jesus. We turn from our old ways. We repent from the sin that's been holding us down and causing this death that's in us that we're trying to get away from, and we come to him in faith. Now, you may say, you know, wait a minute, there is a long list of rules that, that Christians have to follow. Uh, you know, religion is so legalistic. The reason that it's like that is because man has made it that way. Man has made it that way. And, and yes, there are rules in the Bible. Yes, there are laws in the Bible. There is a moral code that we live by, uh, but we don't do that so we can gain God's favor. There's no way that we could ever be good enough to gain God's favor. There's no way that we could ever be good enough to gain our citizenship in heaven. And the only way we can do that is through the blood of Jesus. The only way that we can come and be emptied of death and filled with life is through the death and resurrection of Jesus and accepting that free grace. And then once we do that, we live by this moral code because we love him. Listen, in this life, death is certain. In this life, death is is certain. Yeah, we hope we live a long, healthy life. Yes, we hope that death is a long way off, but in this life, there is no escaping this physical death. One out of every one of us will die. But God has the answer for that. God has the answer uh, for that problem. And it's through the resurrection of Jesus. That's why we celebrate Easter Sunday. That's why we celebrate the resurrection so that any and all who place their faith in Jesus will have eternal life with God forever. That's why this is such a big deal. Look what Peter says in his first letter. This is from 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, and to inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through the faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. How, how amazing is that? How awesome is that? You see, as human beings, we're sinful people. And as sinful people, we deserve death. We deserve punishment. We deserve isolation from God. But thanks be to God that through his great mercy, it has caused us to be born again into a life that is with him. And not only life here on this earth, but life eternal. We were dead in our sins until Jesus came to this earth, took our sin, uh, was nailed to the cross, buried in the tomb, and then came out on that third day victorious, all so that we could be emptied of our death. All so that we could be emptied of the sin that causes the death and be filled with this new life that he is giving us. Life eternal. We are emptied of death that we deserve and filled through life through the grace of God. And all that is required for us is our faith. All that God requires is that we put our trust in Jesus and follow him. That we place our faith in him and, and trust him and, and come to the name of the Lord Jesus and to be baptized in the water, and to be born again into this new life. We're emptied of death and emptied of our old life and filled with this life that Christ gives us. So if you're watching this today, and you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is a great time. Listen, I have heard hundreds and hundreds of stories of people that through this whole shutdown and lockdown and quarantine and, and coronavirus, ha people have come to Jesus through this. Uh, people that have never thought about God, who haven't thought about God in years, who have pushed him away and lived their own life and, and never ever came and accepted Jesus uh, and would have never stepped foot into a church, somehow stumbled upon a church service on Facebook and came to Christ through that. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're still living dead in your sins. But God is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Through the death and resurrection, that life is possible for you. 
Maybe you're watching this this morning and, and, and you've pushed God away. You know, you, God's been on the back burner for a real long time in your life. You've worked real hard to build your own kingdom and, and live for your own self. And you know that that's not right. You know that you need to come back to God. Maybe that's you out there. This is a good time to come back to God. Look, Easter's all about being new and being renewed and having this new life. This is a good time for that. So if you're in either of those, either of those camps uh, that I just mentioned, please feel free to reach out and send me a message here on Facebook. I would love to talk, to, talk you through that. I would love to um, you know, walk you through what it looks like uh, to be born again. Because each and every one of us was walking in death. Each and every one of us was dead in our sin until that free gift of, of grace was offered to us and that free gift of life was offered to us. But we have to reach out and accept it. Now, if you're watching this and, and you, know, you have been saved, you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, uh, great and awesome for you. I'm so happy that you made that decision. Uh, and here in a moment, we're going to sing a song, a couple songs actually, and, and I want you to be able to uh, worship through that and to worship uh, freely. Listen, Jesus went to the cross. Jesus went to the cross and died for you. If you were the only person on earth, Jesus would have still come and died for you. He took the nails, he took the thorns, he took the spear, and he went to the grave. And then he came out of that tomb victorious over sin and death. And as a result, we have the opportunity to be emptied of death and filled with life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you so much that, that we have the opportunity to be filled with life. And that even though we deserve death, even though we deserve this destruction and doom and gloom, you loved us too much to leave us there. You sent Jesus. You sent Jesus to die on a cross, to go to the tomb, and to come out of that tomb victorious over death once and for all. And God, for that we are thankful. And God, we ask that you please press on the hearts of those that have not accepted you yet. And convict them and show them that you are the only way. We love you and we are yours. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen.